Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study. Our, our Father's Word, how fantastic. Chapter 8 of Proverbs, Wisdom Speaks. If you, she calls. Have you ever heard her? Do you ever listen to her? That's what's important that you do. Wisdom comes from our Father. And we finished with the 17th verse of this 8th chapter where Wisdom spoke and said, I, um, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Not maybe, not perhaps. You will find her. Uh, and wisdom is better than precious metal. Because if you don't have wisdom and you have precious metal, you're not going to keep it long. I guarantee you, you'll, somebody will rip you off for it or you'll blow it or something. But if you have wisdom, you know how to put it to work. You know how to gain more. That's why wisdom is a treasure. It's, it's something that is very valuable, especially wisdom from our fathers, divine wisdom. And what he said in, earlier in this chapter is um, if you find that knowledge, you will intuitively be able to discern right from wrong when you see it, when it hits you. That's precious because it keeps you out of trouble. Having said that, let's begin with the 18th verse of chapter 8, the great book of Proverbs, the comparisons in life. That that is good, that that is bad, and wisdom is speaking. She's calling out. And she says, Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. In other words, that that is right, and however far you want to go or whatever you seek for, wisdom will get it for you. Because you're wise enough to know how to accumulate it, to earn it, to gain it, and yet be able to sleep good at night. Okay, Verse 19, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. In other words, wisdom will, is with you forever. No one can take it away from you. It it uh, enables you to outsmart Satan, to outthink him in Christ's name and through Christ's word, whereby, um, if you know, gold is, is a commodity. Wisdom is yours. It's in your mind. It's there. It's, it's precious. And it shows you how to accumulate all those things when you need them. If you don't need them, wisdom would say, what's your hurry? You're doing good. Wisdom discerns and gives you understanding and common sense. Verse 20, I lead in the way, or I walk in the way of righteousness. That's the path of that that is right. In the midst of the paths of judgment, uh, judging which is right, which is wrong, which is trouble, which is blessings. That's life, friend, and you need, to, you need to pick the right path. And if you walk with wisdom, she'll guide you. She'll look out for you. She will help you intuitively know to discern. Verse 21, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will find, I will fill, rather, their treasures. What it's saying here is, I have the ability to bless those that protect, that hold me. Uh, it is in my, it, it, uh, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Substance being uh, valuable things. In other words, if you follow wisdom, um, you can guarantee you'll inherit. You'll get what you deserve. Uh, you, not necessarily to inherit in the way that man might think of inherit, but to earn. I would prefer to say to earn. Uh, when you know, when you're wise enough to be able to earn for yourself, that's better even than an inheritance. Uh, and I'm speaking now of things of the world. But why? Because it's yours. You earned it. You earned it the hard way, maybe. But you were wise enough to be able to do it. 
and, and you can just be comfortable with that, you know. And um, uh, that's my own opinion, be that as it may. There's, however, there's nothing wrong with an inheritance of, of properties, but uh, be that as it may. But wisdom has it in her power to be an enabler of treasures, of, of wealth even, if you would. 22, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, his path, before his works of old. That means even before the first earth age. This, this, word, um, this word here, the, the Lord possessed, probably the Hebrew would even translate um, created. The Lord created wisdom in the beginning before there was ever a speck that we can call erets or the world, the earth, that is to say. And, and uh, that wisdom was with him. Here she's crying out to you. When, why? Because the Father likes to share. And, and wisdom will accom accommodate you in all things, helping you make the proper decisions and uh, so forth. But it, you would be amiss if you didn't grasp the fact that the works of old means even before the first earth age, wisdom was with God. And even as it is written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, where God would say, I chose you before the foundations of the world, that being the first earth age, even before that, wisdom was with God. 23, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or even ever the earth was. Um, uh, at the outset of the ages, I was there. That's how precious and valuable divine wisdom is. That is to say, divine wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God. This wisdom that is speaking here, this wisdom that is speaking out, and she's true to her word. That's why we can call her wisdom. And uh, our Father um, graciously, willingly, um, likes to share that wisdom, that's why in the first place he wrote this letter to us. That's why he uh, intended that you absorb it. Because within that comes the wisdom that was with him before anything. Before anything ever was. Before he took the form even that he is. Uh, verse 24. When there were no depths, there's no abyss, I was brought forth when there, when there, um, well, when there were no fountains abounding with water. In other words, before we had those, wisdom was there. Well, well how could that be? Well, God had wisdom with him when he created those things. Wisdom made it possible. God's wisdom. Verse 25. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. I was with him before one stitch, before it ever happened. 26. Listen to me now. You've got to hang on. This gets a little bit deep, but it's simple. While as yet he had not made the earth. I want you to grasp that the earth doesn't exist. you understand? While he had not yet made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, that means the first little autumn had not been created of the earth. Well, what's he talking about? Well, he's going to tell you what he did before. Twenty-seven. Um, when he prepared the heavens, in other words, the heavens were before earth, okay, you got it? I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth. Now, I want you to know what a compass is. It's important that you know. God uses this. More, it has come up more times than one in Christianity, uh, in the Old Testament, 
the, a compass, as it is written here, is a protractor, okay? It has a point on one end, and it has a pencil or something on the other end that will draw a perfect circle, okay? Put things in a perfect orbit. He's talking about the stars, the moon, the sun. And, you know, uh, this same, this same uh, compass or protractor is what is the first words that Christ spoke personally to Paul. When he says, Paul, Paul, why do you kick against the pricks? It means this, this point, sharp point of the compass. In other words, he was telling Paul, I have a perfect plan, and you're trying to kick the prick whereby the circle becomes messed up. You're messing up my work. That hurt old Paul. But at the same time, there, there was another time that God would speak when he spoke to old Job before anything was, especially before this earth age. Old Job has listened for 38 chapters to a bunch of ratchet jaws that absolutely knew not one thing, thought they knew everything, thought what was happening to Job was because he was a sinner. It wasn't. It was because he was God's elect, and Satan wanted to destroy him. So there's a lesson in it for God's elect that you'd better know and understand. You better know who you should listen to. I'm just going to read just a little bit of that 38th chapter of Job. For it's, it's, a nice, it's a subject very near to what we're discussing here in Proverbs. Chapter 38, verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, In other words, his vehicle was there. His altar was there. Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Who are these stupid people you're talking to, you're listening to? Verse 3, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. You girt yourself, that means get ready for action. That's men wore skirts at this time, and you took the girt and put it down between your legs and tied it up where your legs were free, and you were ready to run or whatever it was to be done. Uh, God said, I'm going to demand an answer. Verse 4, for, because he's listening to a bunch of idiots. Verse 4, and, and you know something? You'll hear a lot of preachers that will preach sermons from what those people were saying. It's awesome, awesome. Verse 4, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Well, I, I could say the same thing. You answer it. Well, uh, who knows? We know we were with him, that's for sure. Who hath laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? Question. Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Who, who set the compass? Who put it in or, orbit? You know, even to this day, we can fire, because we have um, science and because we have the knowledge and wisdom of, of that circle, it is so accurate, that circle is that God put in motion that we can fire a shot at the at the Mars and miss by only 30 miles, uh, one spot on Mars, Mars. That's doing something, friend. Or we know where windows are that if we want to join up with the, the space lab, exactly when a, a shuttle must go up in, within that window of opportunity of the circle. We have that wisdom, awesome. But God had it long before we did, and we only, only scratched the surface compared to what he did. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? What holds the earth where it is? What makes it stay in that particular orbit? Question. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Question. You begin to realize how magnificent our Father is. Look at this earth as a planet. And know that he made a perfect thing until Satan rebelled. Verse 7, when the morning stars sang together, this is his children, okay, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. They were happy there and in, in that first earth age. And, and it, it was a blessing to God. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? In other words, who did this? God did, of course. What God is saying, listen to me. 
Don't listen to a bunch of ratchet jaws. You'll have wisdom then. So we see that the sons of God were there. It's just like the stars themselves, wandering stars. God can name every one of them. It may not be the same name we call them, but God knows their names. And God knows every child, every one of his children. And there's no gender in that. It's sons and daughters, okay? However, at that time, there were no daughters. And, and now in the flesh, they are both for um, the generations, be that as it may. Returning then, if we may, to the eighth the chapter of Proverbs, and, and that gives you a little thought about this compass. And when it says, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the earth, verse 28 of the eighth proverb, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, wisdom was there. By wisdom, he prepared it. 29, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. And when he appointed them, they were exactly that way. And, you know, we know that there has been an overthrow. God makes that very clear, okay? And, and there's great proof of it when you know where to look, even today. Verse 30, Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. In other words, the very emotion of God was happiness because of wisdom, because of having everything as it should be. Verse 31, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, Ewats, and my delights were with the sons of men. That's to say the word men here is Adam. I, I was there with them. This is what they were called even at that time. I was happy with them. They were happy. This was before that great overthrow and God creating this earth with the plates as they were at that time. They're not the same anymore. I'm going to tell you how one of the easy proofs that brings and breaks back the simplicity of time and emotion as God created this earth to be habited, not, not, not uh, void and empty. When you go to the state park of Ashfall in the great state of Nebraska, kind of in the central U.S. of A. Do you know that you can find there many animals? There was a great, uh, from the state of Idaho came a volcano uh, eruption, and it covered many animals. The carnivore have not had the opportunity to destroy them or scatter the bones. They're all African, right in the center of America. There are five different types of horses. There are camel, that's to say zebras. There are camels. There are rhinoceroses, even to the point that you'll see a mother rhinoceros, and inside her rib cage will be the forming of a baby rhinoceros. All, all the birds, even the turtles, are African, meaning that these plates did shift. It is a trip that if you ever make one trip to discover artifacts and to understand how God shook this earth and how the plates did shift, and then many might understand how that if you put America, the Americas and Africa, the continents together, they kind of have the same shape, then you know that how it must have hurt our father to have had a perfect circle, compass, and then have Satan upset it the way he did, whereby the catabole, the overthrow, had to take place. If you ever want to see a absolute results of the overthrow, go to Ash Falls State Park in Nebraska and witness it. We have a documentary made there 
that shows you in detail these things, but it's much better to even go there in person. If you ever go to a state park that's it's kind of out of the way, but it's well worth the trip, you want to go because it shows how God has changed things. And many would say to the better, well, Satan caused it to be not the same wonderful place it was when the sons of God relaxed and rejoiced and and were so happy. And you can see the results of that in Ash Falls, Nebraska. But there you have the lights and the children and the joy. And you see what happened. But it will return. God is still with us. We have nothing to be worried about because you can possess wisdom if you'll search it out, if you'll seek it. And do you know something? Let me give you a little clue. True wisdom is to understand the simplistic way that God operates and has formed things. And the simple teachings of Jesus Christ, that that is very natural when you follow it to bring happiness and joy. Continuing then, let's go with the next verse, verse 32. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. That's wisdom talking. Do you want to be blessed? Then gain wisdom. Listen to her when she calls out. Well, how, how does she call? Through the word of God. Absolutely. Through the word of God, you find wisdom whereby you can handle basically any situation and that that you can't handle, God will take care of it for you. Verse 33. Hear instruction. And be wise and refuse it not. Don't you dare refuse instruction. Do you know what we call somebody that, well, let's, let's let the word tell us. Uh, uh, verse 34. I'm sorry. Verse 34 reads, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. That's the very judgment seat itself. One that waits for wisdom. Don't be impatient. Learn wisdom and, and be blessed. Watching daily, every day. Gain something and, and uh, be happy with that. You know, a wise person will receive instruction. A fool will not. Okay. A fool won't receive instruction. They, they know everything. Nothing you can do about that. That's fine. But for yourself, receive that instructions and what comes with it blessings blessings and and with wisdom you are able to conquer the world that is to say in your own way and family to be successful verse 35 for whoso findeth me findeth life that's eternal life beloved not just in the flesh but eternal forever and ever and ever and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Why? Because you pleasure Him. He receives pleasure from you. Why? Because you, 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 you uh, absorb His wisdom, the wisdom that comes from Him. And you receive that instruction, and you don't receive it and just lay it aside. You use it. You let it become a part of your life. Where did He say put it? In your mind. And let that wisdom settle there. Whereby, again, the spirit, your spirit, then intuitively is able to know right from wrong. Whereby you have the blessings of God. And let me tell you something. A lot of people don't even believe there is a God. But those of you that love him and have received his blessings know very well there is. Because he blesses you, you find that peace of mind. You find happiness and um, you know who to thank for it. But at the same time, you gain eternal life forever and ever. And let me tell you something. This, this world is a beautiful place. And this world will go back to, to the way it was. You know, there's an interesting thing back in the 26th verse. that I did not call it to your attention, but I will now. That in that 26th verse, you have, while it... Uh, while as yet he had not made the earth, the word in the Hebrew is erets. Okay. Hadn't even touched it, nor the fields, 
nor the highest part of dust of the world. The word world here is tebel, and it means a habitable world, okay. be, to be habited, inhabited. And our, our Father is so complete, and it's going to go back to that way. Verse 36, to complete the chapter, but he that sinneth against me, against wisdom, wrongeth his own soul, not, not somebody else's, wrongeth his own soul, all they that hate me love death. In other words, that's where they're going. And, and this is not just death of the flesh. It's the second death, which means also death of the soul. Uh, many might say, well, I've never heard of that before. Well, then you've never read Matthew's chapter 10, verse 28, have you? For there it's very well written words of Christ, Fear not those that can kill the flesh body, but he, almighty God, who can destroy both the flesh body and your soul, cause it to perish, to die. That's what the lake of fire is all about. So what a beautiful chapter, this chapter 8 of Proverbs. Wisdom speaks. And you will never find a chapter that covers the formation of the world, how God did it. And to, that is to say, for you to think about, to meditate upon. And, and not only the earth, but the very heavens themselves, the stars, the Milky Way, the moon, all those things that he, he said, we're, we're, in other words, who should you listen to? Remember what his words were to Job. He said, you, you listen to these people that absolutely have no knowledge instead of me? So why, why would you listen to somebody that doesn't teach God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, whereby you can gain wisdom instead of having a one verse revolving rev, um, evangelistic uh, exempt, and, and call themselves teachers. They're not. They're not teachers of God's word anyway. They're teachers of their own philosophy. And philosophy and tradition sometimes can harm the very word of God. So there you have it. And what a beautiful thing it is that our Father brings forth. Chapter 9, verse 1, subject continues. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Seven is spiritual completeness. What kind of house does wisdom dwell in? I want, to, I want to take you, if I may, to the great book of Revelation. I want to go to chapter 3 of the great book of Revelation concerning the church of Philadelphia. You that have the key of David, you that have the truth that no man can, that you can open and no man can shut, that know who those are that claim to be of our brother Judah, but are Kenites, son, and sons of Satan. You know the difference. He says here in verse 9, Behold, uh, I will make them of the synagogues of Satan, which, uh, well, let's read verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, that's wisdom, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. What hour of temptation? The hour of the Antichrist. We do not find him tempting. We find him to be an abomination. For the hour of from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all, not part, all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth, to, to test them out. What you got, okay? You've studied God's word, you know the truth, or are you going to be deceived? Verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Don't be deceived. Here's why we came here. Verse 12, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. That's wisdom's house. Okay. How would you like to be one of those pillars? The seven should have perked your mind. The 7,000 that will not bow a knee to Baal, which simply means spiritual completeness. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So there you have it. You have that opportunity to be one of those pillars of wisdom. 
That, that's an awesome thought when you get right down where the rubber meets the road and realize you could have a destiny. Many of you have known there was more to God's word than you'd been taught and that wisdom was speaking to you as she always speaks from the word of God. She's building this house. It's called the house of, of, of the many-membered body. And those pillars at this time are earning. Why? Because they accept wisdom. They receive instruction well, from the world, no, from God's word. From our Father himself, they receive that wisdom. And um, so it is. Verse 2, she hath killed her beast, she hath mingled her wine. That, that means she's not, not that she adulterated it, but that she even added a little special flavor she hath also furnished her table. Now, what this is, this is wisdom in contrast or comparison to the old harlot we were covering in the last chapter that prepared a table and a bed. The question is, which banquet are you going to? Which banquet are you going to participate in? Um, you want to go to that one that has the way of the world? She's called Sister Babylon. Or are you going to go to the be a pillar in the very house where a great meal is prepared? It's the wine and the bread, which is our Passover, which Christ became. Which table do you want to go to? Which table do you wish to participate from? I would think that if you love wisdom, she loves you. That's a true saying. And she will take care of you. It is within her power. It is within her right, wisdom, to progress you, to bless you, and to help you. Wisdom will do that. That's why it's so precious. It's more precious than gold. It's more precious than silver more precious than rubies. Wisdom will always, always bring you to that table from which all blessings flow. We'll pick this up in the next lecture. What a comparison. You know, I don't think a person should even intuitively have to depend upon discretion to know the difference. I would think that you would know without even thinking about it. And I suppose that's what intuitively means. This is the meal we want to partake of. This is the banquet that we want to be invited to. Wisdom's banquet, the table of our Lord. Don't miss the next lecture. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Ezra and Nehemiah. These two books are necessary to understand the returning to the Father in that sense of the example set forth in the end times of the rebuilding of God's most favorite place on earth. Also, within these two books, you find the hidden secret, hidden from most people's eyes, that the study in the Hebrew and the Chaldee that is given in these particular books will teach you how that the priesthood itself became polluted during this period of time. This is to say about 400 years before Christ walked the earth to the time that he did walk, instructing you very wisely, setting the example of how it is that we gather back to Christ himself. Ezra and Nehemiah, fantastic. You'll enjoy them. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That uh, telephone number, good from throughout, uh, from Puerto, R Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S. of A., uh, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the Spirit moves and you have a question, you call us. Won't you do that? Share that question. Um, and please never ask a question about a particular reverend, religion, denomination, or organization, why we don't judge people. It's not our right to judge people. God's word and wisdom do the judging. It's always at the gates that that is right. 
Uh, those of you that listen by short wave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you, and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Now, you got a prayer request. You don't need that number, and you don't need an address. Why? God knows what you're thinking. He does. Why not you're his child? And he's the heart knower. And just talk to him. But most of all, let him know you love him. You know, prayer is simply to level with him. Say, Father, I love you. I have, and when you don't write out some long dissertation, you say, I got a problem. He, he's real intelligent. You know, he catches on quick. He knows what you're thinking before you even say it. So let him know you love him. That's the most important thing. Father, around the globe, we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Okay, and question time. We're going to go with Nadine from Oklahoma. Um, our handicapped daughter asked me, wonder what daddy's doing. He passed away on March the 8th. I told her he was resting in Yahweh's awesome place, uh, peace and love. We've studied with you for a good 15 years. Is it written exactly what they're doing? I don't believe I've uh, read anything except God is putting an army in heaven together. Well, that's true. I'm so thankful we found God from his word through taught by you. Well, God bless you. I, I appreciate that, uh, Nadine. Um, we, we know from, we know from um, the 16th chapter of the great book of Luke that, um, th that they are they're, they're embracing and uh, they have that love and understanding and that peace and they have that fellowship. When one is in the spiritual body, they don't have to be taught the word because they know the word. But um, those that army does teach discipline, though, and that's where he is. And you answered her real well. And and um, our regards and feelings go up, prayers go out to you and to that little daughter. We thank you for that, uh, Dolores from West Virginia. I ordered Smith's Bible Dictionary from you. Why isn't the word tribulation or the millennium not in there? Um, well, because they're not in the Bible, okay? Now, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you'll find in the Word of God. You will find that when Jesus was conceived, uh, he, it was instructed that he would be named Emmanuel, God with us. And we are told in St. John chapter 14 that in our Father's house, Jesus would say, there are many mansions. That word is boni in the Hebrew Greek. And it means a resting place, not, not some big house. It means a resting place. That's all it means. And then mono, the word abide. When we abide in the Father and the Son, we come into that same resting place. So there you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that being the Godhead in the, in the dimensions necessary to teach man in, the, um, in, in their uh, proper and perspective dimensions. Okay, that's the, and the millennium itself you will find mentioned in, uh, well, I can think of one thing. We read it in the last lecture, Second Peter, or, or that was a, a Sunday service, I should say, this weekend service. Second uh, Peter, chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one of, of, one of the Lord's days is a thousand years of man's days. That's a millennium, okay? And you will also, when you go to Revelation chapter 20, you will find a thousand year period. That's the Lord's day. That is one day with the Lord. So the millennium is written, but not the very word itself, millennium. It's simply a thousand years in God's word, okay? Jane from, uh, naturally, the triune Godhead is one. We only have one God. Don't ever let someone tell you we have three different gods. That's sacrilegious. Jane from Indiana, of what people were the European crusaders? Christian crusaders. Okay, they were made up of the ten tribes that went north over the Caucasus Mountains. 
Uh, Tom from North Carolina. I would like to know, is it a sin to pray for the same thing over and over again? Thank you, Tom from North Carolina. Now, now, now you can continue asking for the same thing. The only time it's a sin is when you chant. Okay. You start chanting and pretty soon you get the flesh into the prayer. He didn't like that. If you're going to talk to the Father, don't go into these chants and so forth. Okay, that, That's a no-no. It's repetitious uh, to the point. It's not your mind asking necessarily, but pretty soon you get your body into it. Okay, But if, for example, if you ask every day, fine, that's good. Um, as a matter of fact, there is a parable that finally uh, a judge gave a woman what... Um, she was asking for when he didn't really want to because she's bothering him. He kept, she kept asking over and over and over. And finally he said, let her have it. So, you know, and our father gives that example that, yeah, continue asking. Make sure you know he knows you love him, all right? Uh, that cuts a lot of slack when you're talking to our father. Mark from Wisconsin. Can you explain the verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18? Does, G, does Christ return in these verses uh, after the, or is it after the two witnesses are slain? Yes, it is. Three days later, three and a half days later, okay? And what is meant by the dead in Christ will rise first? Will we be physically brought up in the air? The word air, as it is utilized, you'll find it 109 in your Greek dictionary, and it means the ambivalent air that you breathe, the breath of life body, meaning your spiritual body, okay? You instantly are changed into a spiritual body. We shed the flesh. We get rid of it. And what does it mean that um, the, those that sleep in Christ shall rise first? Why? Because they're not out here in a hole in the ground. When, when they die... Air the silver cord parts, as it is written in Ephesians, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. Instantly, instantly, the spirit, which is the intellect of the soul, meaning the soul, returns to the Father that gave it. No, no messing around. So that's why we can't precede them, because they're already out of here. They're gone first. We're still here, but they're gone. They're with him. Thank God. Praise God. Okay, hope that helps you. Dorothy from Tennessee. I want to know, why do airplanes fly uh, in up in heaven put out smoke? What is it? I asked my Bible study teacher, and she said, God makes the clouds. I know God makes the clouds. I want to know why the airplanes up there make smoke. Uh, well, darling, it's not smoke. Okay. It's called a vapor trail. In other words, with their speed and there is vapor in the air and it forms the vapor, which, which in a sense you can call it a cloud because a cloud is vapor. Okay. If your Sunday school teacher was a little closer than maybe you thought, but it is their speed and the disturbance of that air and the moisture in it that... Um, Check out the word vapor in your dictionary and you'll, you'll better understand, okay? It, it, is, there, it is not smoke. It is not harmful. It, is not, it does not hurt our atmosphere. And um, uh, it's simply vapor because of the disturbed air. In, I'm a gene from Georgia. As I study in the, is it safe to believe that if I study my Father's Word and no one else does, that mean even if I pass away before the tribulations first, uh, Satan, and second, my Father, will I be on the right side of the gulf? Of course you will. If you're studying the Word and you love the Father, that's important, is to let Him know you love Him and ask Him to, to, that you believe upon the Son. You know that Christ died on the cross for us. And with that comes salvation. I would be so sad if I went home and, and couldn't be with my father and the ones that made it. Well, you don't have anything to worry about. You keep, you keep that word in your heart and mind, and you'll do just fine even if you go before. Passing away before the false Messiah appears 
doesn't hurt anyone, okay? You instantly, you're still going to go to the Father. And of course, what is written in the book of life determines which, which side of that gulf we go on. Michael from New Mexico, and I hasten to add, you're doing what's right. You hang with it. Michael from New Mexico, what did Jesus mean when he said, who is my brother or who is my sister? Um, and um, so um, he meant... Uh, when when they told him his mother and brother were, were there, he was Emmanuel, God with us. He's the father of all peoples. So why would he not say, if you were had wisdom, who who would you call his brother and his sister? Everyone. Okay. Now, uh, this does not have anything to do with whether one believes or doesn't believe. They're still children of God. But they are called children of Satan if they go too far the other way or children of Bilal. So, um, but that's why he would say it. He was, he was, in that sense, he was Savior, but he was Emmanuel, God with us, Father of all. Okay. Um, Wallace from D.C. And, um, okay, thank you. Do you think... I'm, I'm thanking you for the your question. Do you think uh, Dr. Luke knew when how to keep the body in balance and alignment, or did he stuff his patients with drugs that may have temporarily relieved symptoms only to create other symptoms in the process? I, I think he kept everything plumb square and level, okay? he He was a servant of God, and he knew uh, alignments are very important and to get out of uh, alignment is not a good thing. Simplify, and uh, to an old Navy buddy, we'll thank you for your letter. Uh, Ken from Texas. Um, before the false Christ, will there be a man antichrist to prepare the way for the false one? Now, there already is, in a sense, but I think there will be a specific person they try this every so often with Maitreya and a few other things, but we, we will have um, the fake of fakes, but we watch for the fake one himself and not be just uh, pulled off to one side, okay? And uh, how can you identify a Kenite person? You're, you're to leave them alone, okay? That's what, they're the tares mentioned by Jesus in Mark th uh, Matthew chapter 13. You're to leave them alone. The angels will take care of them um, at the end of the millennium. Okay, And if they should choose to be a child of God rather than someone else by that time, then they become children of God. That's it. Okay, Donald from Virginia. According to the Bible, laying up your treasure in heaven and not here on earth, where rust and moth and thieves destroy and steal, of course, would be the best investment and return of your money. However, does God promote the investment of worldly assets into commodities such as gold or silver or other commodities? Well, you know, if uh, there's nothing wrong with um, investments is, not, is, is legal, but you want to always know what you're doing. When you mention commodities, you're talking about a very... A critical thing, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can get your lunch eaten pretty quick in commodities. And I'm speaking of overall and in general. <clears throat> Always, it's best, and I'm not giving any legal advice here, but um, you always want to be diversified. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, because if you drop that basket, it'll bust every one of them, and guess what? They're gone. So you use wisdom and let wisdom help you with that. Um, when you have a person that would say, I can play any game that you can name with any man from any land, uh, you've got quite a bit of knowledge of games of the world. But if you don't know what a game is, don't play it. Okay. You, you want, I, I, always have, I have a saying that it's, it's my own. And that is, I don't mind wading in, but I'm going to know pretty well I'm not going in over my ankles when I step into the pond, okay? 
when I wade into something, I know I'm not going in over my head, okay? So, uh, and you want to be that sure of yourself, and that way you'll always do pretty good. Um, a redhead Irish lady, Georgia from Virginia, 89 years old. Well, bless your heart. Where in the script? Where is the scripture that states that the spirits from the first earth age needs to be born of woman before Christ returns? Well, you find it in the books of Ezra in the uh, Apocrypha, but it's it's also in the New Testament in John chapter three verse seven. It's written very clearly there. Christ says, you must be born again, is what it's translated to. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says, you must be born from above. And all must be born from above, meaning every last one of them. And um, we feel that because of the days of Daniel, the organization of Israel as a nation, in the year of our Lord, 1948, that's A.D. 1948, I will hasten to add, so that I don't confuse somebody, then that was to be the last generation, the final, that all things would come to pass in that generation of the fig tree. And um, we're, we're knocking along pretty good at it. So there it is. But we must all, as it is written in John 3, verse 7, Christ's word, you must be born from above, meaning everyone that is above has got to be born through the flesh. God doesn't play favorites. When he does for one, he does for all, unless it happens to be an archangel. Um, Priscina, what a, what a pretty name, Priscina from Illinois. Pastor Murray, please tell me who the spirits were that Christ preached to in 1 Peter 4.19 and why. I love your teachings and your clear explanations. You are the best Bible teacher that I have. My pastor talks in circles and can't explain this to me. I don't think he really knows. Help us and thank you very much. Well, it's, it's really, all you have to do is... Um, and, um, I hope your pastor maybe can read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, and it tells you there who it was he preached to. He went all the way back to the time of Noah, and, and it's a very simple thing. It's, it's the fairness of God. The people that died before the crucifixion took place did not have the privilege of salvation except by the law. And uh, that was a pretty tough, tough old cookie to cut, all right, without breaking one of them. So what he did, because we that are bo come after have the privilege of salvation and repentance to have sins forgiven, which they did not, then in all fairness, he went all the way back to the beginning, everyone that was in paradise, and taught them and gave them the opportunity to believe upon him. That's in chapter 3. In chapter 4, where you're talking about, those are the ones that, I mean, they accepted, and many of them were freed because they believed. The Old Testament documents Messiah. You know, there's no, no great step in that. Isaiah chapter 7, a virgin shall conceive, will have a child, you will name him Emmanuel. In Psalms 22, they will crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. They will nail him to the cross. The Roman soldiers will gamble for his clothing. This is Old Testament. His arms will be jerked from socket because of nail to the cross. That's Old Testament. So the Old Testament declares um, salvation, and uh, so it is. That's, but he went back and he freed those people because they recognized, yes, Messiah did come after they had passed away, and yes, they believed, and yes, they were saved, okay? It's just God's fairness, that if he does want for one, he'll do it for all, okay? Uh, Marilyn from uh, California, I love your Bible teaching. Thank you. I have a dispute about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The person I was speaking to said, show him in the Bible where Cain is not Adam's biological son. He knows it all, he thinks. Please explain again. Well, then let him explain to you why Cain isn't in Adam's genealogy. 
Cain's genealogy is given separate from Adam's genealogy in chapter 4 in the book of Genesis. And in the closing verses of 4 and 5 begins Adam's genealogy. You will not find Cain there because Cain was not Adam's son. Okay. You can read um, the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and find out who Cain's father was. You can also read St. John chapter 8, verse 44, and verses following and find out who the first murderer's father was. Well, now let me think a minute. Who was the first murderer? Well, it was Cain. You can find out who his father was in uh, St. John chapter 8. It's called him the devil, okay? Uh, Charles from Pennsylvania. You mentioned a time when politicians would act like children. Where does the Bible say this? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. He said, in the last days, your princes are going to be children, and I'm going to have babes rule. As, as that means as presidents and as senators and so forth, that they have the minds of, chi of children. Even, unfortunately, it gets all the way down to babies. Okay? And you've got a lot of baby talk goes on, too, I'll tell you for sure. Uh, it's too bad we don't have a little maturity whereby um, we're not in this situation we're in today of fuel shortages. Oh, uh, you know, we've got it. Why, why should we buy it from somewhere? I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all a lot. Why? Because you enjoy studying God's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. He sure does. And that's where that wisdom comes into your life. Make God's day. He'll make yours. Brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, though, you listen to me now. You stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you. of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It's getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. No shipping and handling. Just call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also mail your request to Shepherd's Chapel, P.O. Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Ready to get back into our Father's Word? We're going to finish the lecture on repentance. Repentance, as you will remember in the Greek, means to exercise your mind. That's, that's kind of the prime root in Greek for